We have big news in the NHL today. They've announced the deal for their second partner for the NHL broadcasting rights in the United States. Cole Caulfield finally made his NHL debut, and we have some signings and injury updates as well. We'll jump into the latest coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have some big news in the NHL and a variety of things to discuss here today. Let's kick things off with the big news on a U.S. TV deal. The NHL has officially announced their second broadcast partner will indeed be TNT, as we reported on yesterday that they were the rumored frontrunner, uh, that they kind of jumped ahead of Fox here, who was also in the mix for the remaining package, uh, NBC had pulled out recently. We don't know the full details exactly on why NBC pulled out, but obviously we're assuming it's mostly financially related. They seem to be going in a different direction. So the TNT deal, of course, like the ESPN deal, will be a seven-year deal. They'll be broadcasting 72 regular season games per season. They're going to have a 50% uh, part of the playoffs to broadcast as well. They're going to get three Stanley Cup finals. They're also going to be broadcasting the Winter Classic. And they will also have games streaming on HBO Max. So certainly a, a nice bit of business there for the NHL. Uh, between the two deals, they're going to be taking in a significant amount of money. Between the U.S. and Canadian TV packages per year, they'll be taking in approximately a billion dollars. We know in Canada, Rogers pays around $350 million US, and I believe the two deals between ESPN and TNT will be paying the NHL rate around $625 million per year. So, of course, $350 million from Rogers is Canadian dollars. You convert that to U.S., you put it all together, and it's slightly more than a billion dollars per season. So that's going to certainly help uh, stabilize the NHL's revenues here for the future. It has a direct impact on the salary cap. Uh, so that's certainly some terrific news and a good piece of business there for the NHL to get this taken care of. Of course, we've had a lot of rumors around who they were going to be working with, which broadcast partners were going to be involved, and now we have the full picture here ahead of next year. One thing as well with TNT is they have confirmed as well they're going to have a similar type format to their NBA broadcast, so you should be able to expect hopefully some very colorful people and have some fun segments and you know make it a very entertaining process here all around. So I think TNT overall makes a lot of sense for the NHL to partner with here. Um, so we'll see uh, how everything works out, but it's certainly pretty substantial news here today for the NHL to have this all lined up and of course last night we also finally seen the nhl debut of habs prospect cole caulfield of course he's had a hard time getting into the lineup due to the really tight salary cap constraints that the montreal canadians are facing but they were able to get him into the lineup on an emergency recall basis due to several other players having injuries but haven't been placed yet on injury reserve so obviously he get to play last night i think he played between 15 and 16 minutes i uh, had around four shots on goal uh certainly had a decent game uh one of his mistakes though did directly lead to a turnover that led to a goal uh by the calgary flames but fortunately for montreal that they did indeed win the hockey game which was the big news that they were looking for last night uh so we certainly brought some energy i think that's fair to say uh they was given ample opportunity to play a decent role in his debut uh and certainly things went well we'll have to see how they handle their uh, lineup adjustments here moving forward it's going to depend on injuries uh, and of course where that's an emergency recall uh, they had to put romanov as well back through the taxi squad and likely use their final recall after that because uh, one thing a lot of people don't realize is after the trade deadline you only have four call-ups so you're very limited that way but you can use the emergency recall route due to injuries if you've already exceeded your uh, your number of available call-ups so certainly uh, nice to see caulfield in the lineup i know a lot of people were expecting uh, you know some dazzling plays and some goals and I, i've seen some people on social media saying his debut was disappointing which i think is a little bit crazy a little bit ridiculous uh, i think he had a, a decent game he's a young player he's bound to take a little bit to get his feet wet and to really get those skills on display so i'm going to cut the kid some slack at the end of the day the team won which is the main thing obviously i think he had an okay start yeah there probably was a few mistakes could he have done a few things better of course but it's his first game you know leave him alone and uh, we'll see what he can do here with the habs moving forward now in other news as i mentioned we had some signings and some injury updates uh starting off with the ottawa senators they've confirmed that austin watson who's been out with a hand injury after blocking a shot is indeed done for the season so watson won't suit up for any of the final games here for the senators down the stretch they also confirmed that goaltender matt murray who was injured here yet again uh the other night uh, looks like it's not as bad as they were 
originally fearing, and that he very well could be back for the end of the year and maybe might be able to play uh, one or two of the final couple of games of the season. So uh, it's a shame, really, because Matt Murray has been hurt numerous times this year. Uh, he's just uh, got off to a slow start. But then after his recent re- return from injury, he was playing really well. He had two shutouts in three games, was finally on a good roll, and then he gets hurt again. So if it's not one thing, it's another with him. He needs to be able to stay healthy and keep playing the way he was for that contract to be justifiable and to really solidify things between the pipes for the Senators. It was actually a really uh, weird situation too because obviously because of COVID restrictions of this year, uh, there's not the um, emergency backup goalies that are provided by the local local players like you normally see. So we had a situation where Anton Forsberg was supposed to start that game that Murray got hurt in, got hurt before the warm-up or during the warm-up, couldn't go. So they brought up Matt Murray to play who was supposed to back up. Murray started it. Uh, Marcus Hogberg then became the backup, who was obviously on going to be on the taxi squad for the night. And then, uh, of course, Murray goes down. So Hogberg comes up. So if anything happens to Hogberg, then there's nobody. So they have to provide their own emergency backup. So they actually had Artem Nisimov, who hasn't been playing much lately. He's been on the taxi squad. He was in the back with the goalie gear on, had everything ready to go. There's a clip of it on social media in case you haven't seen it. He actually was doing some moves in the back just to kind of give the guys a chuckle. And uh, hard to say how he would have actually made out in-game action, but we almost had an arty goalie there, uh, which would have been interesting. Um, you know, he looked like he was moving around pretty good, but get him on the ice and some uh, pro players shooting at him could have been a whole different story, but it certainly would have been at least something that would have been entertaining at the very least. But Never got to be. Now, the Senators also announced today that they've signed Robbie Herventi, who was their 2020 second-round pick, a left winger out of Finland, uh, who's had about a pretty good season playing over there in Liga this year. Uh, scored 14 goals and 25 points in about 40 games. So I know I saw some of his highlights this year. Looks like he was playing very well. Uh, he's a good-sized winger. And he's going to come over to North America. He's already getting ready to join their AHL team in Belleville to finish out the season on an American Hockey League tryout type of contract. So his ELC won't actually kick in until next year. So he's another winger that could be a part of this team's future. Uh, Already had a good season right after being drafted, which is nice to see. And obviously for them to bring him over and get him into some games with Belleville now uh, certainly is a good sign that they see him likely playing there next year as well, which means he could be available for call. So you never know. He might not be too far away. But at least getting a crack at the NHL if he continues to play and develop the way he has in Finland this past year. So we'll have to keep our eyes on that. And they also said that uh, their 2020 first rounder, Ridley Gregg, who was uh, originally with Belleville but returned to the Western Hockey League once they get their season finally up and going, will indeed be back because his season there will be done in time that he can come back and join the AHL team. So he's going to be able to play, I think, the last final seven or eight games or something to that nature uh, to finish out the season there as well. So a lot more news there on some of the Sens prospects. Now, and we also had confirmation today from the Columbus Blue Jackets that goaltender Jonas Corpusalo is indeed out for the season with a lower body injury. So that's certainly not great news for him. He hasn't really had the greatest season, statistically speaking, but a lot of that is not just on him. It's on the team in front of him as well. And I would not be surprised to see some fairly significant changes with the Jackets. It could be behind the bench. They could be making some other trades. Uh, there's certainly question marks around the future guys like Lani and Domi and Tortorella, etc. One of the goalies is rumored to be traded either Corpus Allo or Elvis Merslickens. So we'll see what happens, but he is done for the year. Now, in other news as well, the Colorado Avalanche have also signed their 2020 first round pick, defenseman Justin Barron of the Halifax Mooseheads. Another great maritime link defenseman going to the Avs. The Colorado Avalanche have certainly had their fair share of connection to the QMJHL and specifically in the Nova Scotia region. Of course, the Avalanche have yet another maritime-born NHL player, uh, hopefully joining the NHL ranks here soon enough. Of course, uh, star Nathan McKinnon is from Nova Scotia as well. Of course, Ryan Graves is from the Maritime, so they certainly have uh, some connections there. Lots of great players coming out from that part of the country, uh, which is gr- certainly great to see. Uh, Justin Barron should be a terrific young defenseman. Look at all the solid blue liners that they already have in Colorado, and they have yet another one on the way so uh, they are going to be well stacked and well stocked here for many years to come so that is all your news for today let me know your thoughts and opinions and everything discussed here and we can discuss further down in the comment section if you're new to the channel consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it i'd appreciate it if you did as always thank you for watching and i'll catch you next time